When I was a young whippersnapper of an artist, I thought that if you wanted to get really good at painting, the only thing you needed to do was to paint a lot. And if you did that for 10,000 hours or more, you would automatically be able to paint anything you want and be really good at it. Today I know that nothing could be further from the truth. So let's talk about it. By the way, in case you're wondering what I'm painting here, I'm finishing a painting that I started a couple weeks ago. A futuristic sci-fi version of everyone's favorite yellow pocket monster, aka Commander Pikachu. Which I'm happy to announce will be available as a print by the end of the video. But first I gotta finish it and while doing that, let's explore how I essentially learn to paint anything I want and why the explanation is a lot more counterintuitive than you might think. Also, if you want to see more videos of me in the future, get some behind the scenes insights and access to real time videos of my paintings, make sure to join me on Patreon. Okay, so when I was younger, I very much believed in the 10,000 hour rule. If you've never heard of it, it's the idea that it takes roughly 10,000 hours of practice to achieve mastery in a field. To put that into perspective, that's like binge watching The Simpsons from its pilot episode to its latest season and then doing it all over again but 30 times. That's how long that is. But the problem with that simple calculation is that it ignores all nuances. Even if you spent the next 10 years painting nothing but faces and you actually get really really good at it, it doesn't mean that you can do the same thing on a two meter canvas. Just as a short story writer might struggle with an epic novel or a sprinter with a marathon, scale changes everything. The vastness of a two meter canvas demands completely different techniques and a completely different perspective and a whole new understanding of space and proportion. It's not merely about enlarging what you know, it's about adapting and also about relearning things. A tiny brushstroke that brings a small canvas to life uh, simply gets lost on a large scale. And the same is true the other way around. Just because you can paint something on a large scale doesn't mean you can do the same when you're painting in a sketchbook. And the reality is that most people cannot translate their knowledge well or in some cases at all to a different medium or scale because they simply have no experience in it. And that's not even taking into account different subjects or different genres. Transitioning from painting peaceful landscapes to capturing the energy of uh, cityscapes or shifting from realist style paintings to abstract style paintings, it all requires more than just a switch in subject. It's a switch in mindset, in technique and uh, even in emotion. Of course, it's easier to transition from one area to another if you have at least some basic understanding of the fundamentals. But to really get good at something or to even master it, you actually have to do it. The 10,000 hour rule is honestly BS. I know artists with twice the experience or even more, but their art looks exactly the same way it looked 20 years ago. No improvement, no change, no evolution. If I painted this image here, 10 or 15 years ago, I would have been able to paint a somewhat realistic painting. Okay, but I would definitely not have been able to paint a convincing painting. I wouldn't have been able to create the illusion of shiny metal or glowing neon lights. I might have been able to create something that kind of looks three-dimensional, but I would have painted everything the same way and with the same technique and as a result, everything would have looked the same as if it was made out of the same material. And if you would have asked me to paint the same image on a two meter canvas, well, I would have been completely lost. So one of the things that I luckily realized down the line is that if you want to be able to paint metal, clouds, wood, people, fire, giant canvases, abstract shapes, you can insert anything you want here really. If you want to do that, you actually have to do it. Which is what I basically did for many years. I would paint and sketch anything that looked remotely interesting only because I was curious to discover how to replicate and recreate what I saw. But that is only one part of the story, because even if you did that for the next 10,000 hours, 
Even if you did that for the next 10,000 years, it doesn't mean you will automatically get good at it. To get really good at something or to get really fast or efficient at something, you have to do something that's called deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is a term coined by psychologist Anders Ericsson. And it's not just any form of practice. It's very intentional. You specifically target areas of weakness or areas you want to improve in. Just spending hours holding a paintbrush or playing the guitar or practicing free throws doesn't guarantee you that you will ever get good at it. Without focus, those hours can become just repetition and there is no growth or no evolution. This is one of the reasons why I'm a big promoter of using a projector, by the way. Even if you aren't a master at your craft yet, if you want to get better at painting, for example, you have to paint. Not draw, but paint. Drawing is an entirely separate skill that you should also master. It's probably the biggest difference between good and great artists, but it has nothing to do with painting. So anything that will allow you to make more paintings or to practice paintings more often or to paint faster or more efficiently, you know, it's your friend and it's not your enemy. When you use a projector, you're allowing yourself to bypass some of the initial steps that might be more related to drawing or sketching. And you can quickly get to the heart of painting, which is, of course, playing with color, with shades, with textures and different techniques. And what it does is it allows you to deliberately focus on the painting process itself. That is the other realization that helped me get the ability to paint pretty much anything I want today. And that is to have an open mind and throw out all the so-called rules and conventions that you come across in the world of art. I can't possibly touch on all the silly rules I have come across in my lifetime here, but I want to give you at least one example of what I mean that will hopefully make you question one thing or another, or at the very least, give you a different perspective. If you study and learn painting anywhere in the world today, it's always at its most fundamental core, mixing and adding paint to a surface to create the illusion of whatever. But here's the thing. Has anyone ever stopped to question if that is actually the best way to get the result you're looking for? Why must it always be about adding paint? What about subtracting or removing it? And I'm not talking about erasing mistakes. I'm referring to purposefully subtracting paint as a technique itself. The act of removing paint can often create unique textures and results that simply adding paint cannot achieve. And there are many instances where it's actually a much more superior technique, especially when it comes to creating the illusion of complex textures. It's just one example, but it perfectly encapsulates the idea that traditional methods and widely accepted norms are not always the pinnacle of artistic expression. Throughout history, artists have been celebrated for breaking the mold, challenging the status quo and introducing new techniques and perspectives. Think of the Impressionists, who were once laughed at for their unfinished and rough painting techniques. Mastering an art form, whether it's painting, music or any other discipline, it's crucial to embrace the traditional but also the unconventional. And very important to keep an open mind. Not so open that your brain falls out don't get any wrong ideas, you know, you don't have to find out what happens if I eat my paint first before I start painting. But it's important to keep an open mind. And the great thing is that you don't just have to take my word for it, but you can actually see the results of what I'm talking about with your own two eyes. Half of the painting here is just as much about what I didn't paint as it is about what I did paint. Much of the metal, for example, isn't even painted. It's just the bottom layer of the canvas shining through, which I'm using to my advantage. And I would argue it's working quite all right. So Commander Pikachu is now available for pre-order on my website. It's only going to be available for a very short time till August 31st. But because of that, it's super affordable. So definitely make sure to grab one 
while you still can. And now, my friends, I may present to you the hero we don't need, but the one we certainly deserve, Commander Pikachu. <laughs>